Greetings, Benjamin J from Ben's Trains with another in the series. Well, a new 999 arrived today, and uh, it's on my bench. I have to do some repairs before I can do anything else with it. And uh, showed up today, found this on eBay for 10 bucks. And uh, actually, it was uh, a buy it now for 15, ready to expire. And I contacted the guy and I expl explained to him that the main contactor is missing, period. And that the uh, engine is not going to run until that is repaired. I offered him 10 bucks for it and he accepted. And as you can see, it's not in terrible condition. The biggest problem, of course, was the missing contactor. The plate itself is not broken. It's just the contactor is missing. So, went through all my parts and uh, found a contactor of course and the contactor has a hole on either end for soldering the main power wire which is right there so I just want to show you a really simple way to install a contactor if it's missing now one of the biggest stumbling blocks of course is the spring now you go up to uh, Ace Hardware and you can uh, go through their springs and you can find these really light wire springs now there's two kinds of springs there's compression springs and there's extension springs this is a compression spring really really light wire so I looked through what they had and uh, chose this one simply because it's smaller you can see how light this is and uh, I've already used this several times it was about uh, probably the same length as the other one and so you need about uh, four coils off of this spring so you just count up one, two, three, four. Take a pair of nippy cutters and cut that spring off and you have a replacement spring for the contactor. Now to put this contactor on you have to be careful that you don't break the plate off and it's really simple to do this. So before I install this I want to uh, clean off the copper so we can solder to it so I'm using a razor blade as you see and just get all the oxide off of the contactor itself so the uh, solder can stick to this and it's really hard to solder to copper that's covered with oxide so just scrape it with a razor blade razor knife uh, plain old knife, sandpaper, anything. I like to use a razor blade because you can really control it and it doesn't get any grit anywhere. So scrape that off, uh, take an X-Acto knife and just go around the hole on the inside and that gets the oxide off of there. Okay, so we've put our spring in place. Now the easy way to do this is hook this over this side line up that spring with the peg. Now as you see I'm holding that uh, contactor so it cannot move and then slightly bend out just flex this end out and push it down and it pops into place and the contactor is repaired as you see really really simple to do this now we have to solder the wire back into position now this wire is made of steel it is not made of copper so it's kind of difficult to get it to solder so what I do is twist it nice and tight I hope you can see this it's one problem with trying to work on the bench with this camera it's on a tripod directly in my way so twist it up nice and tight and then take a razor blade and scrape the steel itself to get the oxide off of the wire. All right, so I've got my soldering iron here. Wipe off the tip. And the first thing we want to do, of course, is tin this wire. And like I said, this is steel, so it takes a lot of heat. It's not like heating copper. Alright, that looks alright. Now we go to the contactor itself, put some solder on it. 
And I'm just going to do this quick and dirty so I can get this up and running real quick. Probably good enough. Now, take the wire. I'm very likely going to have to hold this with a pair of hemostats, but let's try this. Melt it. See if you can stick it into the hole. Nope. It is really difficult to solder this steel wire. And it gets really hot to hold it. That's probably good enough for testing it. Alright, so we've got the contactor repaired. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. So let me unplug my soldering iron. And I have a small transformer, test transformer. And let's see if we can maybe raise this up a bit doing this on my bench as you see so here's my test transformer so take the motor one wire goes to the frame one wire goes to the contactor and the motor is running as you see it's really really simple to do this really really simple So, $10 for a 999 that didn't work, and you just saw for yourself I repaired it in five minutes. A really simple way to do this. So, uh, I'll be doing some uh, lubing and tuning on this, but in the next five minutes, this is going to be on the rail running. But I just wanted to do a video on replacing this contactor. It's really simple to do it, and uh, it's just a matter of finding the correct spring or a spring that will fit it and fit it well. And I might take one more coil off of that one, we'll see. And uh, see how this is going to run. So uh, I'll transfer this over to the uh, uh, rail in the train room and pick this video up from there. So I just wanted to do a quick video on that contactor. So as always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email. Benstrains at gmail.com And as always, thank you for watching.